After two and a half years of daily use, I wanted to take the time to truly review my 16-inch MacBook Pro. This computer has the M1 Max chip and uh, I have been using it essentially since release for more than two years now. And during that time, it's been a fantastic machine. So I want to go over what I like and dislike about this computer and also the cost. I have the M1 Max chip, but I probably recommend the M3 or the M3 Pro chip to most people because in my opinion they offer a greater value for money, especially when it is available to the MacBook Air as well. However, my workflow requires more power and I wanted this computer to last me a long time. That's why I chose a MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. I specifically have the M1 Max chip, which has the 24 core GPU and 10 core CPU in my system. I have 512 GB of SSD just because I store everything externally. In addition to the 32 GB of unified memory that I upgraded it to. The total cost of this build was 3599 including Norwegian tax. Yes, it was a lot of money, but I know it was worth it for me. The 4K videos I am editing are from my Sony A6400 camera. And when editing in Final Cut Pro, I am always adding effects, layers, and the rendering is just super fast. The fans don't come on very often, and when they do, it's typically because I work in a warm environment. I rarely ever close or exit any of the program I use, because there doesn't seem to be any performance loss when I leave everything open. That's where the 32GB of RAM and the Mac OS background app management comes in handy. Additionally, I have the feeling that the M1 Max chip is a bit too powerful for my needs. The M1 Pro chip would probably be more than enough for me, because I never see the loading icon. However, it's comforting to know that I have the headroom to push the computer even more. I suppose I could use this Mac Pro for many more years to come without really running into any problems. I don't feel like I'm losing out even with the new M3 Max and the M3 Pro chips, since they are increased power is probably not worth it, I don't feel like I need to upgrade by any means. For now, that's the reason why I'm sticking with this machine. I do have a PC setup at home as well. It's primarily used for my gaming. I understand what it's like to have a powerful computer, but despite its stretch, I continue to use my MacBook. I continue to use it for all my tasks and workflows. In terms of the battery life, the laptop easily lasts a day with light usage, but decreases significantly during the resource intensive tasks. However, as I typically have it connected to a display while I edit. Today, the battery capacity is 90%, which is still great. Therefore, when I'm editing a 4K video, the battery life typically drops to about 25% every hour, which is obviously not very long. 4 hours of editing is good without charging. I usually have my computer linked to a display while I edit or render a video. The 16-inch model makes it more appealing to me. It fits better to my workflow. I really think the 16-inch model is the most sensible choice for most people. I adore this model's design so much. When I intentionally saw it on the release images, I wasn't sure. It truly doesn't look bulky at all. In fact, it's quite amazing how much power they have managed to fit into such a small package. My space gray model is incredibly beautiful and still after using it for two years. Thankfully, there aren't any noticeable dents or scratches anywhere. However, I do take good care of my computers and I normally keep it in a case in my backpack or on my desk. I am still annoyed that it took so long for the ports to be reinstalled. I am quite happy that they are. 
the HDMI port is back as well as the SD card slots and the MagSafe. Although I don't personally utilize the MagSafe, I can see others making use of it as I already had the USB-C power cable installed in the office and at work. I really like the SD card slots. It's incredibly helpful and I am revealed that I can now transfer footage for my SD card without needing for a dongle. The high resolution Liquid Pro display is simply amazing. The display has 120Hz, which is quite wonderful. The maximum brightness of the display is 1600 nits. While some individuals prefer an OLED, I doubt it could achieve that level of brightness with the OLED. As I used the computer more and more over the past year, I have come to the conclusion that the 3599 price tag on this specific laptop is well worth it to me. I got a good deal with the company I work for. I paid just $1,300 and they paid the rest. I could not let that chance fly by. This computer will I have for many more years to come, as long as the computer performs. Without a doubt, this computer is among the best. It combines elements such as the M1 Max chip, the battery life, the terminals, and the stunning screen. Two years later, and I still think it's an incredible product. I hope you found this review of a MacBook Pro enjoyable. Thank you for watching.